No, that are going to happen cost. if we don't get our act together. How much will it together? cost to get us carbon neutral? It's going to cost trillions of dollars. How many trillions? I don't have the estimate or the numbers in front of me. I've if we spent $50 trillion to become carbon neutral by 2050 in the United States of America, how, how much is that going to reduce world temperatures? This is a global problem. So we need to reduce our emissions and we need to do everything we can. How much, if we do our part, countries. is it going to reduce so world we're temperatures? So we're 13 percent of global emissions. You don't right know, now. do you? You don't know, do you? You can do the math. We need to. You don't know, do you, Mr. Secretary? So we're 13 percent of If you know, why won't you tell me? And that is the hot topic buzz that was Senator John Kennedy completely stumping the deputy energy secretary when pressed on exactly how much it's going to cost the American taxpayer to go carbon neutral by 2050. <laughs> Batia, your reaction? <laughs> Look, um, this looks like it's about politics, right, left versus right, but actually this is yeah. about class. At the end of the day, this green utopianism is created by progressive elites, and it is the working class who has to pay for it. They lose good union jobs in the energy sector to minimum wage green jobs. They have to pay more for gas, more for electricity. You know, Marie Antoinette said, let them eat cake. Today they say, let them drive electric cars that they can't afford. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, Cheryl. Yeah, well, look, I mean, speaking of electric vehicles, I mean, look, many Americans do like electric vehicles. They're willing to pay for them. Uh, but let business like capitalism drive this train. The American taxpayer does not need to spend uh, $50 trillion uh, to just hear the de Deputy Energy Secretary, David Turk, by the way, that's who that was, say that he has no idea uh, how much this is going to reduce global emissions. And by the way, uh, China, India, Brazil, uh, there's a laundry list of countries uh, that are not going to listen to the United States and take our lead. That's actually absolutely wrong. If anything, the Chinese in particular, they want to they want to compete with us and steal our technology when it comes to, I don't know, solar uh, uh, you yeah. know, production, electric vehicle technology. They're going to steal it from us and use it to their, their benefit. No, no taxpayer money needs to be spent for all of that to happen. And that's exactly is what going, is going to happen. Well, I don't have a lot of optimism that the number one polluter in the world is going to stop producing products for the world, Lou, uh, no, I, China, a, a, and follow some climate change agenda. Well, that's exactly right. If David Turk doesn't have the numbers, let me give them to you. We're 13 percent of emissions. <laughs> China is 27 percent of emissions. So it doesn't matter what we do, China is going to double that, what our output, and they could care too, not at all about emissions. I mean, I, I got to be polite. Yeah, I, I got to be polite on national television here. But here's, a, here's an interesting stat that everyone is losing sight of. China uh, permitted more coal plants, power plants, in the last year. Uh, they're doing about two coal power plant permits per week. Uh, right now, currently, they could care less about emissions, and it doesn't matter how many trillions of dollars the U.S. spends and throws at this problem, it's not going to change the impact. We can't clean China's air for them. So it's yeah, just, it's, it's, it's a wasted money again.